If you had your Bibles, your phones, remain standing with me in all of this. Even the anointing that's on the musicians and on the choir, you're going to understand it in just a moment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As the deer, Psalms 42. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? I want to read that again. Oh, God. God, you be glorified. You be magnified. You be lifted up, oh, God. Let the stars and the heavens glorify your name, oh, God. You alone are worthy. You alone in thy majestic majesty, thy majestic power, God. You get the glory. You get the honor. Let everything that has breath praise God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. We thank you, Lord. We lift you high. Stretch wide, oh God. You sit high, oh God. You see upon us. You look upon us, oh God. Blow the breath from heaven, oh God. Blow your wind from heaven, oh God. On your people. Restore. Restore, God. Oh God. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so thirst, so does my soul thirst, my soul thirst for you, oh God. My soul thirst for the living God. When shall I come and appear? before God. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask, oh God, that you get the glory, you get the honor this day, oh God. In the next couple of minutes, oh God, I pray, oh God, that they hear your word, oh God, and it touch their hearts, and they will continue to thirst after thee, oh Lord. It is in Jesus' name I pray. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. Some of your Bibles may read to the chief musicians. Some of your Bibles may read the chorus master, the contemplation of the sons of Korah. That's letting you know it is a song, it is a poem. But I want you to see something in scripture that's going to cause you to read this psalm a whole different way because David was writing to his musician and his chorus director his choir director and he was stressing to them that the words that I am about to introduce to you I need you to express the importance of hope and gratitude and thirsting after God and so when he was communicating this literary genius piece of master peace, poetic writing. He was trying to stress to them, this is not a, a typical psalm. This psalm that I want you to write the music for and direct the 
choir has to be a song that's going to convince those that's dealing with distressful situation how to worship God. I need you choir to give them the sense of, of pressure in their spirit that a hallelujah is necessary. There's things that we're going through that sometimes listening to the choir and listening to the lyrics is going to help you overcome your adverse situation. Say amen. The song that you listen to on the radio, whether it's hip hop, secular, or, or a Christian, if it does something to your spirit, man, and you're saying that, uh, this song reminds me of when God delivered me. This song reminds me of when I needed him in a distressful situation. Choir, can you convince the people that it's necessary to worship God? Because the way we read Psalms, sometimes we forget that David wrote it, but David had to teach it. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. Y'all know I am. So when you get to this place and you're reading the Bible, the way that is written and the way that is structured, he's having this conversation with his musicians that has to write the uh, music and the notes in accordance to the words that I'm about to teach you. So you have to be just as anointed of the lyrics that's on this piece of paper as far as conveying the message that I'm trying to communicate to the people. David had choirs 24-7 singing around the throne of God. So he had to keep writing and he had writers that had to be anointed enough to direct and give off the vibes that I'm trying to convey to you. Watch this, everybody. Hallelujah. His musicians needed to stress to the people that through worship and show and demonstrate it. Because somebody say, my son. Listen to this, everybody. David's son Absalom was chasing him, trying to kill him and take his throne. So when he's writing this, he said, as the deer um, um, pants after the water, I'm thirsty because I'm running from a psychological warfare, some of you. I'm thirsty and I'm running for something emotional, some of you. I'm thirsty and I'm running because I'm almost about to have a mental breakdown and nobody know it. I'm thirsty and I'm running because I need you, God, in this thirsty place. You ever been through something so devastating that you're saying, fill me, God. Fill me, God. I don't know where you are, God. But in this season, I'm thirsting after you. I'm longing after you. This deer, that what, the reason why he used a deer as a metaphor, because a deer is known to be chased by a predator. And some of you are being chased by a predator. Oh, God. And because we feel like whatever your predator is, watch the literary genius of this. Watch this. Because he said he's writing this because his son was chasing him. Now, we say, yeah, I'm being chased by an enemy. But imagine what he's trying to communicate to you when it comes to your son. How emotional is that? 
if you knew your own flesh and blood was trying to dominate you and kill you. He's painting a picture of how horrible some of the things that we've gone through or are going through that in order for you to win, reach the brook. Somebody say reach the brook. The brook is the Holy Ghost. The brook is the words of God. The brook is your relationship with Christ. The brook is your worship with Christ. Choir, convince the people that I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Choir, convince them that it's in the worship where they're going to find me and I'm that water that they are never thirst again. Hallelujah. He said, my son. Now, I have a group of mentees that we get together 6.30 a.m. on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and we talk about the literary genius, the writings of the word of God. And we have to make things in today's language so you can understand and have a picture because we've read Psalms 42 so many times, but you didn't read the fact that he was having a conversation with his choir. I, I'm sorry. Don't say nothing later. He will fuss at me later. I'm David. Watch this so you can see. So you just didn't read the after fact of Psalms 42. Watch as it was happening, Psalms 42. Isaiah, I wrote this piece. But the thing about what I wrote down, I can't tell everybody but you and Myra that I'm writing this because my son was chasing me. But my heart and my passion about what what's, I'm putting down on this paper is going to be up to you to convey to them how it's important to reach God. Never mind the story of how I wrote this. It's the outcome that I'm looking for. I, I need the people to worship so they can feel, be filled with the water of God because the enemy is chasing them. And they need to understand the, the outcome of the deer if he does not reach water. A deer is being chased and he using this metaphor because you have to know about animals that's being chased by predators. A deer, after running and spending everything that's in him, he has to replenish himself. If he does not replenish himself while he's running and thirst, he will collapse and die. So David could have said, what do you think, Isaiah? Should I use a camel as a camel thirst after water? Should I use as a, as a, uh, uh, a dog chase after, um, pants after the water? What animal should I use to convey the message that once they reach water, they can replenish themselves? Huh, let me think. Um, in this region that we're in my culture, what do we see? Hind's feet. They see gazelles. They see deers. And they know that they are the most hunted. So then he understood. Now, how he understood about a deer, I know not. I just know Google taught me some things. <laughs> and the Google says the panting is the way he's getting air. I'm thirsty. It's time. 
I've been running. I need to get somewhere to be replenished. God, use my, you are my help, my fortress, my strength. God, I need you. I trust in you. I love you. Give me to some water because I'm thirsty. I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. And my back is against the wall. My money is running out. I got to get to you, God. I've experienced trauma. I've experienced death. I've experienced bankruptcy. I experienced divorce. I experienced slander. My back is against prickly walls, nails, everything. The enemy is chasing me. Stop preaching my message. Everybody say, get to the brook. Myra and Isaiah, I have these lyrics, but I need music to these lyrics. Because if I didn't have the music to the lyrics, it is just a poem. But I don't want it to be a poem. I want it to be a song. I need it to be in a way that they can internalize and be able to walk with this every day. I need my spirit to sing in their ear that when they, when they are in that place of panting, that they are here as the deer pants for the water. So my soul longs after thee. You alone, I don't know the rest of the song, but it was all my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. How many of you from that school that you know that song? Hallelujah. So Myra gonna sing it at the end of a minute. Because we thirsty. How many say they, they remember that song? It's a little bit of y'all. Oh my gosh. I'm literally, yes, because we come from Soul Saving Station. They wore that song out. I promise you they sang it every Sunday. And when I was little, it was like, now I'm old. It's like, older now is is so meaningful and so valuable to my soul now because i understand being thirsty and i understand needing god i understand that he is my thirst quencher how many of you understand that oh how many of you really understand that I remember Brother Hooper used to play the washboard when I was growing up. <laughs> Tiffany, you remember Brother Hooper playing the washboard? That's Brother Hooper right there, everybody. And I promise you, he probably brought out some spoons, too, and was playing spoons, too. Washboard and a tambourine. Old church, right? And he bring out tambourine every now and then. Let me give you the definition of what David was trying to convey. And as the choir understand what David was trying to convey, he said, hope. Hope is expect with confidence. Write these down. Hope is to expect with confidence. It means to cherish. Desire with anticipation. You got to desire God with anticipation. He said, you got to give assurance, choir, because he's talking to the choir, but talking to you guys as the choir. You got to stress to the people to anticipate, desire, have an expectation in God, cherishment, Convince the people to raise their self-esteem, to overcome negative effects, to enhance your worship, 
You have to convince them to be thirsty, having a strong desire for something. You got to convince them to be hungry for God, eager for God. You got to worship your way through because my son is chasing me. I don't know words to put to this, but this is what God has given me. You got to convince them to how to break this emotional place. You got to convince them how to enter into the holies of holies. Worship is a weapon. Did you get that, Miss Annette? I was talking fast, but I was trying. She got it. Worship is a weapon. I'll call Charm this morning, and I was talking to her, and we were describing the anguishment of being chased by your flesh and blood. And the way she was describing it was like, I wish Malcolm and Harkin would. But she said, but when you look at it and what David was trying to convey, if I wanted to leave you with something, you got to get to the place that you want God in a manner to break this emotional place, to break that place of sorrow, to break that place of fear, to break that place of disappointment that all of us have felt. You got to get to the place that you're saying, God, I need you above all of this. What was the message that David was trying to convey? He was saying that you need to hope in God. He said that not only do you need to hope in God, worship is your brook. Worship is your brook. And because worship is your brook, did he say amen? Amen. See that? I hear the baby say amen. Y'all ain't saying amen, but my ear heard the baby say amen. Let the little children say amen. So when you are, you are getting to the place that you understand, I don't try to be, I can't be but Christy, Elder Ford. So when I'm worshiping, you're going to see me shout. You're going to see me do this. You're going to see me do that. You're going to see me do this. You're going to see me. Ugh! That's just me. But I'm doing it because that's how I'm entering in to my worship place. My worship place that's going to quench me from everything that I've been going through. And David said that I want the people to understand worship is the brook. So, Kwai, I want you to convince them that worship is the brook. So when you're up here and you're demonstrating worship, y'all know they're trying to communicate to you. Worship is the brook. As the deer panther after the water, so does my soul thirst after thee because something is chasing me but it's going to be a point in time that I am going to find the brook amen and I wrote this this morning they gave me the last of it this is my poem COVID is trying to rob us but God is still God the enemy has been released, but God is still God. The waves are rising, but God is still God. In him do I trust, but God is still God. My heart is thirsty. But God has given me a song of praise and adoration. And my song of praise and adoration is trust God. He will see us through. Try God and watch him help you make your way through. Because God is still God. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I 
I know some of you, not all of you, because you might be at the best time of your life right now. And hallelujah. And, and, and messages like this, you have to say, okay, I'm going to keep it. You know how they used to put stuff in jars and tighten them and put them in the pantry? And you have to realize that sometimes we hear these messages that we have to put in the jar and keep them. Because <laughs> you're going to open that jar and eat those peaches later. <laughs> Anybody that can, can God and God can. <laughs> and you're looking for a way, you're saying... I, I long for you, and I'm thirsting after you, God. I'm really thirsty. I'm really thirsty. Anybody really thirsty this morning? I'm really thirsty. I'm really thirsty. The word thirst has given, been given such a bad name, but I'll be a, I'll be a thirsty person after God. <laughs> I'm thirsty after God. Because I've been running, but I found my brook. And that's why I can stand here and convince you that worship is your brook. You may not do like this, and you might not be all demonstrative like I am. It doesn't matter. What is your heart doing right now? What is your heart saying right now? I'm thirsty. I keep looking at Chelsea over there and, and working in as a, as, as, as a nurse in that, that trauma area and nurse in the hospital. And I'm sure she's praying for people. So if you're good right now, pray for her and say, God, I'm thirsty for you for Chelsea. I'm thirsty for you that those that's in the, the, the limelight every single day. I'm thirsty for Lieutenant Ford out there with all this violence. I'm thirsty for you, God, to give me answers so I can speak life to his spirit. I'm thirsting after you, oh God, for our children and this violence. I'm thirsting after you. I'm pulling on you, God. into a worship place, a place that you're just asking God to feel that desire in your spirit. Pray for somebody else if you feel you good. I'm pulling on you, God. Hallelujah. You're my heart's desire. I long to worship Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, there are those, oh God, that's just thirsting for you as salvation, God. They're thirsting for you to come and do a new thing in their life. They're thirsting for you, oh God, because they won't change, oh God, and they just don't really quite understand how to get it, but they won't change in their life. They want to be a better person, oh God. God, they just heard about you from their grandma. They heard about you from their daddy. They heard about you from their mama. But they, they really never got to the place that they didn't understand the value of worship yet, God. They, they, they didn't really get to the place that they, they understand you, that you will quench their thirst, their desire for you, oh God. In that emotional place, Lord. In that place of instability, oh God. In that place of weariness, God. Hope thou in God. And watch, God. 
God come through for you. Hope thou in God and watch God make a way. Hope thou in God that he will steady your life and put you back on the right track. He will make crooked ways straight. Hope thou in God. God, we're thirsting after you. We're pulling on you right now. With all eyes closed, heads bowed, if there's anybody that don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, just slip it up in the air as acknowledgement to God. And you're saying, I want you to quench my thirst. I want you to quench my thirst. Hallelujah, you're saying that. Repeat after me. I believe the Lord Jesus. I believe in the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe that he is and was sent as the only begotten son, the savior of this world, you believe that God sent his only begotten son to this world for the salvation of humanity and you are welcoming him into your heart and you repenting of your sins. Say, I repent. I repent. God, come into my life and believe this or not, it is that simple. Come into my life and I know you've been doing this. I know you've been calling me. And as you're coming into my life, oh God, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you that I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Now as you are asking him, to quench this thirst quench that longing place that I had for you oh God that place of desire do this oh God and it is in Jesus name that we pray we pray hallelujah put your hands together glory to God and then somebody say worship is the brook one more time. Worship is the brook. Ah, uh, y'all gotta do it one more time. Let you know that God is right there beside you. Worship is the brook.